Hello, and welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Halo Season 2. There's a lot of mixed feelings about this, um, this season, and I had the same with the first season. But first let me say, I'm not a big fan of Halo to begin with in, in a play the game sense. I don't like first-person shooters. I don't get immersed in them and get really into them, except if it's something like um, playing the Colonial Marines, Aliens vs. Predator. Um, I like the Gears of War, almost third-person. You know, you can see yourself. Those games, uh, Army of Two, I, I generally play those. However, I love the idea of Halo so much that I've watched all the cutscenes, all the movies, all the games, um, did deep dives into the lore because I included it into my role playing. I have an amalgam of like superheroes, sci fi, Star Trek, everything. So I'll import certain characters and certain themes. So I do love Halo in that sense the lore, the story, you know, Master Chief, the, the suits, and all the dilemmas that go on with the Covenant. So I do know about the world, the, the universe, but I don't play the games. I've never finished one full game. I've played a handful of multiplayer matches, a little bit here and there, because, you know, it was a, such a popular game. And saying that, it, it, it boggles my mind sometimes when you think about the gaming industry where their games launch with greater financial success than blockbuster movies and this is in general all your halos your awful maddens whatever and you know red deads they will garner such a initial response and financial flood of money that i'm surprised that this show isn't just amazing all around so getting into season two of halo Already, you're confusing me, and you're making me doubt where I left off. And I had watched season one again, and I was confused at the beginning. Although it's epic and awesome, I'll say that. The first 15 minutes of season two, episode one, are amazing. But no spoilers, I guess, from season one. But John's already got caught Cortana out of his mind. And, and it really threw me for a loop. As much as I love the action and stuff, I was expecting a really long, interesting plot that had to do with John not having his emotions and being a machine, you know, being run by Cortana, maybe a dilemma in getting his, you know, his mind back, Cortana getting out. But they do this in, through the season in a couple of flashbacks, and it's so disappointing and when you think about season one and all the fuck-ups it had in general it's a halfway decent show but it doesn't have because the mandalorian's a bad show technically i think but it has so much charm and love that it's it gets by and even though the seasons have gotten worse it's going to maintain a certain level of interest and you know um joy from people and i can see hardcore Halo fans going, you know, nuts that there's a show out, and I'm all for that. But when I see such greatness and such shittiness in, in, a, in, a, in a season, and I start to do my podcast on it, and I look, oh, who's the showrunner? What's happening with the showrunner's change for the second season? I don't know if there's um, real, real love for the, for the franchise. And when you think about going back, I don't know, God knows how long it was. Steven Spielberg's one of the executive producers. And in like 2014-ish or something, he was going to do a project with Halo, and he comes on this thing, and he's like, oh, this is a great time in the world where myth-making and technology could meet. That needs to be something great. I'm glad to be working on Halo, whatever. And then there was this B-movie type um, epic. It was fucking awesome. But it was done by a guy who was going to direct a thing, and it was his way of saying, look, I could do this. I don't know. Blumkoff or something like that his name might be. You have 
such a fan base already. You've got the money, obviously. Now, maybe there's a hierarchy of gaming industry where even if you make $500 million, it's equivalent to a $60 million movie because there's that much, that many more people in this fucking pyramid of who gets paid. Like, I don't know the industry like that, but you've got all this money. You had somebody epicness in season one, but you decided to do this fucking split storylines, and it just fucking boggles my mind. So it's coming off season one pretty recently, technically. Coming into season two, hype is all hell. I got to admit, I do love the sci-fi, the story, the lore, everything about Halo except for playing the game. So I'm not, you know, I'm not averse to fucking watching the show with some cool plot lines and stuff. Now, granted, I am one of those people who never really got into Game of Thrones, although I recognized, you know, what greatness was put into it until they destroyed it in the final season. But, and then if that's for some people, fine. Maybe this is working on that level. But my instincts tell me that even that's not done right. The first season, they have this fucking Mackie, played by Charlie Murphy, I think. Charlie Murphy. And she is a human taken in by the Covenant, chosen blessed one. She can interface with the artifacts like Master Chief. And they get, they come to contact with each other. He accepts her. She betrays him. They have sex. It's like fucking stupid. And then you got this disaster of a character called Quan Ha, who is an awesome actress and I love her. At least they fixed her somewhat in the second season. But, remember, you're going off this adventure from the first season, Halo. Um, you know, I'm probably the person this show should be made for. Not really a gamer, but who's sci-fi interested, knows the law, but you already went with a different timeline. You admitted you're not sticking to things, which is fine. Do your own thing. But this first episode, the first 15 minutes are epic. It's great. I even love the new... Um, character uh, uh she's a new fucking cadet she's not a cadet she's like a marine and i like the story i like her as an actress and i'm getting into it really well and some of the plots and the intrigue and the fucking machinations of what's going on behind just don't feel right for some reason you got this new character who's a uh, great actor, you know, he's, he, he's, I think he was one of the original vampires in one of those fucking shows, but, and, and he's a fucking villain, it just feels fucking weird, but as the first episode, you know, is, is going through, I'm, I, I'm thinking to myself, do I have to go through this again? And I think that's a bad fucking sign, I'm sorry. You know, David Weiner, Wiener, um, you got all this money, billions of dollar industry, gaming industries, whatever. You get the green light because if it was quality, you know, in my opinion, and like books, which don't really compete in the financial fucking thing, but like Lord of the Rings, like maybe the best trilogy ever, and I even like the Hobbit movies, although I, I admit they're not as good. But in my opinion, like the Sword of Shannara, it, um, just should be made epic and it was done garbage and like by mtv it was fucking a disaster the wheel of time what, what are they doing with that so i can un almost understand you have a book loving um fan base but the books don't really there's no real blockbuster seller you know even even fucking george R. R. martin book which i fucking hate um you know so there's a chance you're taking on that, and you're getting a little bit of money, in, or whatever, a lot of money, depending, and you're budgeting that for what your project is. Now, this is space-faring, fucking enhanced humans, exosuits, year 2500-something. It's a war going on with the Covenant and the alien races, and there's artifacts to find, but it doesn't feel like that's what this show is about. And I get it if you're going to do a, you know, a piece on the character, the development, and who Master Chief is, and your, your whatever your ideals and goals, and you know, whatever vision you had 
I'm fine with it, but then it's got to be done better. I don't know how else to say it. I don't want to, you know, deal with some of the bullshit. I, my brain's got to jump around. The new guy, I think his name is Ackerson. And, and you know, his fucking, uh, the old Admiral comes back, Karen Gosky, like, great actress. And, uh, you know, uh, this is fucking already breaking my mind. And again, maybe it's just the way I try to understand, you know, the, where I am in life, my mindset. But when I'm hyped up and I'm excited, even with the flaws of season one, same thing with the Mandalorian. Although that went for a cuteness charm, this could have went video game charm. Uses one line is bring some of that weirdness that the game had here and there. Because I've watched all these hours and hours of cutscenes. You could even fashion the show as a game. Why not have three episodes of constant battle and before your commercial breaks are cutscenes? And I mean cutscenes like a video game, but done like like. So I get it. So you got this budget restraint. You know what it feels like. You, you're saving your money for these shots, but some of it looks fucking amazing. There's a little bit of shit here and there, obviously. I, I think that's going to happen. But, you know, episode one is Sanctuary, and it starts off great, then goes into this. Oni and Atkinson and Haley's replacement and what, what's going on? Um, and you find out that Quan, I think it's at the end of the episode, is there fucking around with Soren's son, who you met in the first season. But fucking why? This feels to me like Soren's uh, plot character was supposed to be a spinoff, like. The Book of Boba. I, I don't know if that was their fucking goal, if they were that far reaching, but why the fuck is he not either a mentor slash part of the team, independent, who comes in and but is dealing directly with stuff and maybe is re rethinking his piracy thing instead of this fucking cockamamie story? You know, I get that you can, you're losing your respect for your people. And that, that could be cool with. Just the notion of not being a pirate no more. John came back into his life, uh, his Master Chief, his old friend, his best friend back in the day. And he escaped the programming. He was on his own. He made a fucking place that is a fucking disaster. Oh, it's a free place, but it's all slave shit. And this fucking show pushes it to the boundaries that is this fucking stupid. Why am I dealing with all this? So, his wife, his respect. Oh. Guy comes in who's just fucking horrible. Oh, you know, I, I want to say where you respect where people live free and they, they put them in chains and they're going to sell them as an auction. And Soren gets the bait because the guy says, Oh, I know where Halsey is. He goes on a fucking mission. Oh, this is fucking stupid. Kwan is fucking, you know, with Soren's son telling him his fucking monsters are real and. Where the fuck did she come from? Why is she here? And you're getting from the second episode, and with Soren and Rubble, it's Quan's on a fucking adventure thing. Uh, and then fucking Soren's wife. This is fucking dumb. You've got so much. Okay, so the great, great actors all around. Even Soren and whatever, his wife, the kid. There's, there's no real flaw here, except one or two side things, but everything, I love the fucking Silver Team, like Kai and uh, Vanek and Riz, like, when you get to Riz and you find out she survived that sticky bomb fucking thing, and how damaged she is, I'm interested in that, and there are elements here that are good, but Eventually, I don't know if it's in the beginning or it's towards the end of the season, they start doing cut the black cuts, and I'm like, is this supposed to be a commercial here? Is this a vision from certain directors? And they do the uh, two-episode thing. They kind of this is the first season where some, the director does two, then two, another director does two. The writing's all over the place. And I'm sure they have an overall arcing picture, but 
it also feels like a rehash of the first season. And you're just stretching out this bullshit. Get Kwan, she's a protector, fine. She's way better in the season. I love her as an actress. She's fucking great in the part. But you fucking write the part, it's just dumb. Fucking dumb. Again, I want to see Riz, you know, training harder and, you know, John and, you know, you know Master Chief and Kai, you know, just talking about taking out the, so it's been like six months, they take out their fucking, I don't know, emotional dampener fucking things out of their bodies. This, also, oh, it was Perez that was the, um, Marini says, I love her as an actress. She's just like probably my type. And you want these buttons to look big, so she's kind of short and it kind of works. But I think they started doing a little more perspective things where it makes John look bigger, but fine. These aspects are just little nitpicks, but the core story being split up, dragged out in some parts. Like, why the fuck do I care? Um, again, Atkinson, you know, is becoming a big part of this fucking thing, taking over for Halsey, and his fucking, his fucking hologram room, his holodeck. You know, I don't know. Some great elements uh, start to come into the show, though. Um, like the, and, and they fucked up by some bad shit. Why is Perez not telling the truth? What, Survivor's Guild? I mean, what the fuck are you talking about? According to this fucking show, Master Chief is like the most famous, most popular, the most inspiring human for anything to do with the fucking Marines and the war and the salvation of humanity. And she's like not saying anything and John's got this confusion of what he saw because in those first 15 epic minutes, he was fucking doing damage, trying to save the Marines. He couldn't except for Perez. But then there was like eight or fucking ten elites with their plasma blades. But then they disappeared and he swore he saw a Mackie. Um, the chosen, blessed fucking one. She doesn't say nothing to become part of the thing. But Atkinson, da, 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 and you can see he's going into the Kai. It's just fucking bullshit. And guess what? He's got Halsey captive. But is he using hologram clones of a little fucking girl who you realize eventually or they tell you is Ackerson's sister who Halsey killed because she didn't pass the fucking Spartan test to become a fucking a fucking super soldier one in three make it whatever you can't you know because they get augmented and super strength and speed because even when they were out their suits they're like a Captain America type you know threshold a little more. I don't know. The way they depict it, it's, it's a little all over the place. Hold these captive, and he's got this fucking girl come in, and as soon as Holsey tries to get to who the guy is who's captive, keeping the captive, the girl has nose bleed and she dies. Boom, right on the table. Head goes down. Now, this is done so many fucking times throughout the season, or whatever fucking episodes, but if they make an illusion that these are real clones because Halsey makes clones, but they don't live long enough. She's just using their brain structures and whatever. It was in the first season. So is this fucking nutbag, Ackerson, creating malfunctioning, destined to die clones of his little sister to put in the room, to keep Halsey talking or find, I don't know what the fuck is going on. This, is, this can't be, oh, it's been six months, she's going to go, she needs, like, I don't know what the fuck's going on, she needs company, like, who's interrogating who, I get that, but is this a clone of the sister, and eventually during the season she says, oh, I know your sister, I know who you are, but did she know that, that like, because then they got the father, Hackerson's father, and, like, some good elements here, but it's fucking bullshit when you got to go back and, you know, but the third fucking episode, you're in a fucking Kwan, the fucking's gonna help the kid, and uh, Sarah's kid and his wife escape, but they can't, and I don't fucking know. 
you know, I thought she was just a chosen one, something to do with the artifacts and where Halo is. Obviously, this season goes more toward, toward, towards the Flood and what she represents, I guess. But what do you think you're going to do? Just, like, let these things flutter around with boring, not really good written side plots? You know, it's... Ah, it's just fucking... You know, and you want to see fucking... Master Chief John just fucking figure out what's going on. He's like, this is bullshit. What's going on? Cobalt team. Another fucking team that was a great little confrontation with the old Silver team because oh, the Silver team has their emotional dampeners, fucking pod things, fucking button things taken out. So they have emotions now and they're dealing with them. But the old Cobalt team doesn't and they make fun of them. Does this, <clears throat> does this go anywhere? Fucking no. Like, these are the things, like, fans want to see. And these are the things, like, someone like me, who generally loves the lore, whatever, doesn't play the games, wants to see. And could this just be a decision to be made? Like, look, we got to get everybody. We got to have a little bit of love, interest, like, fucking bullshit, or Master Cheeks, right? Is that what they called it? But again, you're going through the first episode, the second episode, there's a, you know, the plots that you want to follow are not fucking, you know, there's, there's no giving a shit. And in that sense, and this could be done well, you know, you don't all have to be fucking Game of Thrones, which I didn't like. And, and so, you know, by the third episode, I'm, I'm already going, I, I, I can see where this is going. Uh, you know, no one's believing John Ackerson cover up. They shouldn't know anything. Uh, fucking Cortana's being held by the fucking Atkinson who's, who's doing simulations to see if this place called the Reach, you know, a massive stronghold, one of the last ones before Earth or whatever, is um doomed to lose this battle. And the shenanigans that go on to prevent anybody from knowing. It's fucking stupid and fucking not interesting. You know what? Maybe it would be if they built on you know you got great actors and actresses built on that but cut out the bullshit keep Quan for every four episode revelation stuff and when you see oh shit she's gonna connect eventually to john again it's destiny it's the fucking space magic stuff fine i'm i'm, I'm into that i'm not a person who shies away from that i don't care if he's special dna forerunner whatever in, in his six you know, the two out of a billion, whatever, fine. But keep it interesting, delve deep, give me the highs and lows, I'll take them. I don't need a full fucking eight episodes of a battle of an act, you know. You have good actors, you have some interesting themes, but why are you putting these things together is the way you're doing it is fucking, it's, it's, it's kind of annoying. And, you know, fucking John goes and gets fucked confronted. He wants to find out. He, fuck up, he fucks up his own team by lying to them that they were authorized and they weren't. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Mackie gets fucking Cortana. You, you know, you're going into the third episode. Oni, O-N-I, you know, they don't believe him. Admiral Pease, who I like, and whatever happens to him later. We'll talk about kind of maybe, but... Again, I'm, I'm, I'm rum, rummaging around in the third episode. And, you know, John escapes, meets with that fucking old admiral. Ah, and then it's revealed she never left the Oni. It's just fucking. I, I did like the part where John goes to Perez's family and they have that thing. Now, this is what I mean by developing things that flow from the actual things that matter to me and you know you're gonna make any show for me but the family of um perez was awesome that you could have built on just like they did with the the former fucking spartan and, and his and his husband that was fucking awesome although him shooting a fucking grenade launcher being blind was fucking stupid but riz going to get fucking help more than just physical therapy was good. I really like that. 
and the actor who played the former Spartan and his husband, the relationship, the the quirkiness of her going fucking up their dinner date. That's there you go. Maybe intertwine Quan and Soren in something that doesn't have to be connected to all this, but just revolves around that. Make it like I don't care what they're doing, you know. Oh, and then fucking, you know, so you're finding out shit, how fucking fucked up Ackerson is, and he knew everything. John said, no, the fucking Covenant are on the reach already. No, they're not. Uh, no, we're going to defend the uh, reach and the keys and Ackerson. It's like, no, we're going to fight, we're going to lose. And it's all part of the plan. Is it politics? Is it, you know, is it lying to help? Drakes of humanity or the people in the city who have no idea they're about to get glass. Because that's what the phrasing they use here. Um, the powerful ship weapons and the covenant are like plasma. And, you know, the glass is a planet. And they don't give a fuck. And, and any redemption towards the end gets fucking stupid. And here, and I think it's like the end of the third episode or so, where Axon reveals that his sister was a Spartan you know, candidate but died during the you know, the process. Uh, it's just, you know, he's going to help his father commit suicide to avoid capture. And then he brings the fucking clone who the father obviously thinks is his dead daughter because he has, like, Alzheimer's and Alzheimer's and he can't remember things as part of the plot, which is probably pretty good because it's connected to things that flowed from the story that I felt were sort of natural. Okay, I'll get to know you know, who Ackerson really is and his motivations, fine. Um, but, you know, John's on the reach, he's captured, no fucking suit. And this is a fucking trend. I, I get it, budget stuff, but... Anyway. They're amazing without their suits, fine. The actors are great, the actresses, they're all fucking top-notch, but they put them in stupid shit. You know... It's just fucking, it's just, it's disappointing. You know, they get an attack, and episode four is amazing, and for what it can do, and it shows you, you know, planetary bombardment, but it's not on a scale that impresses me in a threat level. It's, It's entertaining, captivating on a personal level. Like with John and the team and the Marines and, you know, the epic um, speech from Admiral Keyes and these things work, but you never get the feeling this is a global thing or there's a galactic threat. And this is a problem for first season. The Big Bad Covenant, the meetings, and fine, you reveal there's a fucking special Covenant elite, the Arbiter. And Mackie's fucking fiddling around with him. They get a piece of the artifact. But another piece gets taken by the Marines or the fucking whatever. And Atkinson's escaping. But fucking Reach is doomed. And it's great. This is like probably the best episode. It's got most of the stuff you need and what it's, it's feeding you. Again, not global enough, not galactic enough, but fine. It's great in the you know, personal um, connections with Perez and in, in the team. However, I'm not sure if this is the episode where, um, okay, so they're having a major fight. Uh, Ma- uh, is it, uh, Master Chief is going to go after the elite arbiter and his elites around or brutes, whatever the fuck they're called. And there's a massive fight and one of the one of the arbiter's teammates, Covenant alien, shoots Ma- Master Chief in the chest. He doesn't have a home. And there's a big burning hole, whatever. And he's like, I guess, quote unquote, mortally wounded. You know, it's one of those wounds. If you just keep getting beat up and killed, or you left there, you're gonna die. But <coughs> you can survive if you're taken to a facility or helped by teammates. So, Vanek. Okay, so Mackie says something. 
to the elite arbiter guys like gonna kill John. She's like, not now. I guess there's a destiny laid out, but you'll fucking leave him to be glass on the planet. Like, what sense does that make? But when she says, let's go, and they go, Vanek runs out of nowhere, and he doesn't like kill seven of them and then get killed. Because he's like the best. I've uh, never been beaten. This is part of his story. His thinking of how good he is, how confident he is. But even without armor, he should have been shown to really be dangerous to them. And it takes the arbiter. No, he shoots a needle gun thing at the arbiter, pulls one of the needles out of his own chest, and kills him. It's such a fucking disappointment compared to Admiral Keyes' epic fucking sacrifice. So Perez is getting the evacuation with the ship. Admiral Keyes is going to stay in his last fight. But John actually convinces him that we need you. Get on the ship and get people to safety. Let us do our job. And they're fighting for the hangar. Soren's there. Everybody's fucking sort of connected because Soren was captured. Because that was a trap they set for him in the first episode. Where that idiot came around saying, I know where Halsey is. So apparently, fucking... Oni, whatever the fucking UNC, whatever, wanted Sauron captured. He put him in a cell with Halsey. On reach, to be killed. Like, what? There's no, there's no real knowledge transformation. The, the confrontation wasn't as epic as he thought. Oh, Sauron's going to meet Halsey. It just, it just fucking was a dud. As near, in the middle of this fucking thing. So by episode four, you've got almost everybody together, right? And you just, by the end of this, it just shits on it. It just becomes another mess. From here should have been a focused fucking effort by everybody. This $500 billion industry, gaming industry, hiring the best experienced writers, the script fucking doctors and all your fucking people to come in and here's where the show should have been balls to the wall fucking epic to the end of the season. Reach is being destroyed. It's getting glassed. And he's just like, oh, getting on the ship, he's getting to fly away to, to evacuate and then the fuel line's connected and he goes, oh, I got, I'll be right back. And you know he's not coming back. But he's got, he goes outside to do his fucking to disconnect the fuel line, and he gets surrounded by elites, and no one can get to him. Remember, there's no... Ackerson took all their special armor, and that's how they compete with the elites. And Although they can compete, in general, it's, 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 a, it's an uphill battle. They can't win. So Keyes pulls out his pipe, and disconnects, and his fumes everywhere, and he tells them to take off, because once they hit the fucking uh, thing to get the ship going, the whole fucking thing explodes. So, awesome deaths for Admiral Keys, and I loved him as a character. I thought he went longer in the game, but who the fuck knows? And we know they're not following it. Not necessarily a bad thing. You know, do what you got to do. And, uh, like, a ship comes back to them. Holy shit. It's fucking Quan and Soren's wife, because get this. When Quan had the kid, the mother, Lair, I think her name is, sacrifices the stuff. Says, look, I'll fucking distract these assholes, Soren's crew who turned on him and sold them out. You get my son the fuck out of here. Awesome. Now, Quan decides, hey, you know what I'll do? I'm going to go save your mom. But she doesn't put him in an alley or a box or a little fucking place she knows. No, she leaves him on the transport ship. So guess what? One of the plots is Soren's kid is missing. And there's a fucking... They have to follow a trail and find him because he was put on a transport and probably sold for slavery. Shh. Because most people, even Soren's fucking people, they're all douchebags. Like, the show is revealing... Like another part of this, if you want to show how dangerous the galaxy is and whatever, you can do it from Soren's point of view, but Soren's captured. It's the wife and Quan now, who I'll admit, Quan is awesome in this now. She's very subdued, a chosen Quan. And 
cave paintings and telling the kids, your father's daddy's not coming back. Like, what the fuck is going on here? Superb actresses, new direction, and you're writing garbage shit. You got the fall of reach, one of the best episodes. Um, putting together a lot. I, I like Perez. I like some of the, you know, the Riz interactions with, hey, I got to fucking figure out my, my life. I'm damaged. I'm have to work harder. A uh, uh, training montage thing it was epic. It was in like a, a planet, you know, fighting the other Spartans. Because I said to keep, them, keep themselves on their toes, you know, make sure each one of them can compete. And she's failing. So there's a lot of fucking interactions with her and the, uh, you know what, I really feel bad that I'm not fucking getting this actor's name. Uh, the, the, yeah, because I'm trying to think of the former Spartan's name. And him and him and his husband it was really fucking done really well. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I can't really um nail it down, which is kind of shitty because you got such superb actors and actresses who almost elevate some pretty shitty stuff. I think I'd like to, you know. Ah, that sucks. I can't find it. But I do a quick wiki thing. Uh, oh, that fucking sucks. Hmm. In any case, sorry about that. Um, Maybe in the... I'll go through the episodes. But anyway, we're around the fourth episode and Reach is destroyed. That's their stronghold. We're fucking because we got Spartan 3s and Kai's going to lead them because Agerson's doing this shit with Kai and her motivations and John's leadership. Like, did we fucking do this already? Uh, you know. <sighs> so... She's, uh, John is taken, he's wounded. Uh, Kai comes back with fucking the wife. They save everybody. And they're on this little quest. They're going to a planet. They're going to bury Vanek. Oh, no, you can't bury Vanek. Riz is fucking wounded again because she does a Spartan thing, which is not a Spartan thing. And she runs back for the dead body of Vanek. Ah, in an epic fucking war scene. She's carrying him on his back. She gets back. She gets shot in the back. So she's fucking wounded again. But they get Vanek's body, they save Riz and her, they're on this fucking planet searching for Soren's kid and recouping. We don't know what the fuck's going on, but you know what's going to have to connect and reach um, to elements of wherever the fuck Onyx and nonsense is. Um, it's just fucking... Looking for the kid and the, the dilemma of John, is he more human now? He's getting Mrs. Cortana? Like he even does this fucking thing in the first episode, I think. He goes to like a therapist or a sex fucking hologram room. It looks like a fucking wank room. And he has the hologram look just like Cortana. But it doesn't feel right. I went, When I watched first season, I didn't get this feeling. I get it was the beginning of it where it was, uh, you know, Halsey made me to take over Spartans and elevate them to a new level. I can my combat will increase. Anyway, and she stops him, shuts him off, and he attacks Halsey, I think. And it's one of those I, I'll control you type fail states. But they have a connection, they get to know each other fine. I get it from the game. It's just a epic relationship, but it had no fucking bearing on this. So anyway. Oh, more Ackerson shit and Kai, uh, the Spartan 3 programs and fuck budget. Is it budget that you keep cutting to inside people's helmets? And I get the, 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 the feeling, but you're overusing this stuff. You're overusing it for the next fucking two episodes or whatever it is. Seeing inside her helmet, I get it. I actually love this fucking character, Perez. I get 
where she fits in. I'm okay with it. But enough with that stuff. But, oh, they're getting killed training simulation. Their goal is to put a spike in the enemy's computer on one of their ships, and we're going to get things going. Boom. We win. We have a chance to win, but we have to get better and better. And you find out Agustin lets them win one of the fuck. This wouldn't be so um, draining, feeling so draining. Like I said, I wasn't from the first episode already bounced around, cut the black, delving into shit that shouldn't be in the show, in my opinion. So, you know, half the season, fucking Onyx, and it's just, oh, I don't know. I don't like this even hinting of Ackerson changing or having a change of heart. It's bullshit. Oh, you find out Cortana... And Parangoski were in cahoots because that's how they removed John Cortana from John, and she's feeding data because Cortana's been taken by Mackie. You see, and Mackie is with the Arbiter, and the Arbiter believes in her dream because she's the blessed one. But he's gonna kill her because he doesn't really believe, and he's got people on his ship, and he disobeys the order. And she convinces him because Cortana shows the vision of Halo, and now the Arbiter is whatever. And during the shit, the Arbiter actually kills his own, and he's in whatever, so now they're a pair, and Cortana's gonna help her find the Halo, and she's trying to save John. she's trying to help the fucking Parangoski, and oh, are we, alright, there's a lot going on here, and again, if you just kept things flowing from the source, which is the Spartan team and the Halo, and things kind of revolved around that, these things would be actually pretty good, good actors, some decent dialogue here and there, but you can't keep fucking filtering this with this insanely stupid fucking concept of, we lost Soren's son. And where is that? And why is Quan now back with the team? And uh, This is fucking whatever, and they're on a quest to save the kids. Look at the kid. John's on a quest to find his humanity. He's super wounded. He doesn't have his armor. Vanek is dead. Kai, uh, fucking Quan goes to bury him, and the fucking cult says you can't bury him. Blah, 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 blah. And John doesn't give a fuck. He's like, no, they're dead. My friend died. And he even goes on a speech later, like, I died when I was six. You died when you were fucking, when we were taken. Fine. I, I, I get it. It's part of the Barton legend or whatever. You know, when you're augmented. But, um, I just don't fucking, I just don't want to, you know, again, maybe it's my mindset that once I started feeling these things going not the way I wanted them to, it just felt like I got to go through this type thing. Which is fucking crazy because now Cortana. And she's leading John throughout the... Yeah, she's, like, helping him. This is, like, a guess video game thing where John's walking around, but he's in contact with Katana now. And she's helping him get through areas and fucking up the, um... I don't know, communication systems making... So John has, like, almost a free pass. There's not to beat up too many people. Because he's already fucking shooting people in the leg when he got captured and... Um, he might die, and he's beating his own fucking reins up, and, alright, it, it, it could be fine, but it doesn't feel like it's working, it's gelling right, and again, the writing is filtering through this is not that good. Um, it's just fucking craziness at the end here. There's this fucking shared battle type thing where Mackie's, you know, leading... And they do this stupidly, because there's this revolt where the Arbiter tells his people, if you follow me, you'll live, and they are going to follow the dream, because he's disobeying orders. Well, this is a fucking priest trying to kill Mackie, and he finds Cortana's device, and whatever. So as the fucking Arbiter is fucking killing the, the priest and these fucking betrayers of the faith, Mackie's crawling on the floors, the thing's lit up, and Cortana's got to lead John to the fucking 
artifact so he can touch it, but she can't touch it no more because she's lost her mojo, and we don't really know why. Uh, but she can't communicate or find Halo or touch the artifacts and get a vision, astral project until or when John does it. So boom, they do it, bang, bang, bang. Uh, you know, Thermopylae, whatever the fuck. Again, another confrontation of uh, Chief and Mackie. It doesn't feel right. Uh, what did you try in the first season? Oh, they found each other. They're the same. They, you know, scars to make love. But no, it's betrayal. She's a demon, apparently. And <clears throat> this whole thing goes to shit with fucking Ackerson and, um, you know, finding the facility on Onyx, and all of a sudden Miranda's there, the fucking daughter, and oh, and guess what, your father's dead. Don't worry about that. And so, you know, this is like a forerunner facility thing, and there's the secret things going on. And again, you know, they're splitting up. John's like, you gotta save your fucking, go find your kids, whatever the fuck that was in the other episode. But the main point is, it's still fucking split although they're doing quam better she's led around by the ghost of some fucking old lady and finding a fucking thing she has to run in it and they make connections to the flood here i believe and what the uh, ancient race was doing i think there's a cool plasma bridge in this fucking episode i'm not sure and it's around here that the fucking Ackerson asshole realizes that <clears throat> the training stipulation to put the spike in the enemy ship to disable the ships is a lie. That all you need is one spike to get one fucking ship. Fuck up their fusion drive. Ready? And destroy the solar system. <laughs> All right, I've done some crazy things when I play Marvel Comics. I have some cosmic level characters that we run from time to time, you know, in the vein of like Thanos or the Zerkar. Even done campaigns with like Gauntlet and the Cubes and the Heart of the Universe. Like some insane shit. Okay? But one ship fusion drive in the fleet, like, it has to be the fleet because there's no fucking way. We'll start a chain reaction that will blow up the Covenant ships, the human ships, and Halo itself, and the, the fucking planets everywhere. It seems so fucking stupid. I'm, I am just left out loud. But this is Atkinson's motivation to change. Like, what? You can cause a super nova reaction to destroy a star system? Maybe even Halo itself. <gasps> And isn't this a thing they had to do in the fucking game to defeat the flood? But anyway. Oh, there's a fucking re revelation that the fucking kid was taken to slavery. Fucking, this is maybe the other episode of this. I don't even fucking know. But it's so stupid because Zoran and his wife, the old fucking guy, goes, yeah, I know. Yeah, we got this guy. Here's the date. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we got to take him. Let's go look. They go to this fucking place. This whole fucking storyline. To find the kid, and then they go to this place that adopted the kid who took him in and go, Well, you ain't getting your kid back, you've been beating him, I'll fucking kill you. And there's these two women in this fucking silo shack, whatever the fuck it is. But someone's gonna play it safe, the mother wants to fucking blah blah blah, he's trying to deal with blah blah blah, blah. savviness and do his thing. Isn't he gonna be mean? Is he gonna kill him? Is he a pirate? Who the fuck knows? But the wife gets sent outside because she's too hot headed. Yeah, that's right. You, you told me I beat my kid, I'll fucking kill you. And she finds the kid with the helmet on, the fucking stupid helmet. And guess what? Under the helmet is a little man. Because he's got a fucking mustache or whatever. But apparently, this little man was given the helmet by the, the son Kessler. Because he was afraid. So Kessler gave him the thing. But Kessler was taken by the UNSC for the Spartan 3 Project. Yeah, what a fucking, what connect, and my brain, I want to fucking stop punching people in the face, like, what an opportunity. I'm not even a fan of the game, but imagine, billion dollar industry game, 
one of the most famous, most beloved games in the world. And if I'm correct, you know, I've got promises being made and, you know, changes and showrunner stuff. That's supposed to be shown in the season. Okay, maybe you're going to have to do it in season three. Fine. But this is, this is some level of bullshit that just was like, it's a fuck. So guess what? It's gonna connect again with John going to Onyx or some bullshit, and oh yeah, she's got to go to the base, and that's where fucking ballsy. It's just a fucking mess because as people are arrested and put into these chambers, eventually there's um. Oh, there's a that counter battle is Parangoski, the old fucking Admiral's way of just letting Spartans die by the fucking thousands or whatever. Just they blips on the screen mostly. And as long as one team gets through and puts that spike in, boom, everything is destroyed. The enemy fleet, their fleet, and the Halo, end of problem. That's how they're thinking. John doesn't want that, but uh, fucking Perez tells her, you know. When, when we were, there was a battle earlier, and he's like, she's like, oh, you're so calm. He's like, when I was younger, a woman flipped a coin, and I pulled head 10, 11, 11 times in a row. And I always knew that I would know, and I'm going to die, some bullshit. And, like, it revealed at this. Because they show a fucking Xbox in that episode, I think. It's a fucking, it's like a museum type thing. And they're high. This when they attack the city as the llama. Anyway, so. John's revelation was with awareness and realization comes power. And this realization is he made the coin heads every time. And he didn't guess. He didn't just know. He made it heads. It could give you chills. It could put the hairs up on And if it does for you, fine. But this should have been a through line that resonated with everybody and made sense to me and became a revelation because in my brain, if I'm the dungeon master and I'm running the adventure, I'm even writing the book, I'm doing to do that. If I'm going to write the episode in my script, it's going to be throughout the episode where this is a, one of those scenes where your body gets that flow, that energy in it, whatever. It's just fucking craziness. Uh, Quan and thing and the scientist. Oh, let's go find this thing. Oh, there's a fucking ancient city here. It's amazing. And there's a fucking stupidest fucking scenes that happen. Okay, so apparently, Halsey and her daughter Miranda, whose husband slash father from whatever is dead, and it just passed over. Oh, yeah, he wouldn't leave. They are discovering things because Quan, the chosen protector, has the innate magic power revelation because she's fucking with the stars and I'm okay with this in a way if you're going to connect everything but these hugely advanced scientific fucking doctorate fucking doctors and professors whatever can't figure it out but the daughter has a re revealed something that the mother made a mistake and ooh what is this what? now that's something bullshit anyway they she find the second artifact Hickey with the first one and they're like oh, what'd you get what'd you tell me you got it anyway but when they do this thing they can't figure it out it's Quan who realizes that oh these are stars and these stars move and if you move them here oh, but, and then all of a sudden it's not a map it's a claw what the fuck at, you know whatever fine hints 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 you know whatever opens a fucking doorway and there's the plasma bridge here yeah, and then is which is awesome they go into this room, and this fucking moment is so dumb. Because Quan realizes that this is the monster she's been seeing, that the monsters are real, and they find this, I guess, forerunner, if I'm saying it right, whatever the fuck it is, ancient race who built the halos, and he's in a fetal position on the ground holding something in his hand, and Halsey, the mother, the blonde, the fucking lady from the first season, shit, who was in charge of the Spartans, is crouching, is squatting down about a foot and a half away from the guy. And the daughter goes, don't touch him, whatever. She's about eight feet behind her. 
And then shit starts to go wrong. Like, they realize that the a research place, the vials start cracking, blah, 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 blah. Earth starts shaking, whatever the fuck. Something's wrong. I don't know. Miranda runs over to the mother, calls her, gets her up and goes, get out of here now. And as things are breaking and stuff, they're running, the plasma bridge is disappearing. So it's one of those epic scenes, you know, at the end, oh, we're going to go, no, we're going to go back, no, it's so beautiful, we can't. They jump and they make the jump. And the fucking mother Halsey turns to the daughter, Miranda, and says, Please tell me you got it. And I went, what the fuck are you talking about? You, Halsey, were crouched down a foot away from the fucking forerunner holding the item in their hand. Your fucking daughter came, pulled you away, and told you to get out. You did some funny stuff with the cutscene or whatever, and she's behind you now. And you made the connection that she must have went the distance, got the fucking device, touched this thing she told her mother not to touch, and it was some clever writing reveal. It was fucking dis- I almost threw up in my mouth. Like, what was the purpose of this? Couldn't it have been the daughter saying, what are you, stupid? You almost risked your life. I know you have it. And then the mother, like, because that is Halsey's this fucking conniving cunt. Fine. And now you can see how fucking angry, because what the fuck are you doing? Quan is running because she knows this is badness. Um, yeah, and by this time, fucking Cortana gets into his armor. It's not even epic. It doesn't feel, you know, uh, the moment you've been waiting for where Tony Stark gets his armor back or whatever the fuck. No, it, it just feels like no... It's nothing spectacular. There's nothing epic about it that gave me the feels like you've played the whole fucking season. You not only went double down on the, oh, we, we want John in his helmet like he fucking should be, and like the Mandalorian did when they show him eventually. No, this is like John had his helmet up all the time, kept taking it off. Now, this season, you don't even get the fucking arm. Fine, if you want to play budget wise, but you get a good story, I'm all for it, go for it. It's fucking go nuts. It's just epic. But, again, uh, with all these things adding up and side plot lines that are trying to come together in ways that don't feel natural, you have everybody together. Oh, here, no, we're going to split them up. Oh, we're going to go in a little bit. No, no, Sauron's son. Who gives a fuck? Because Sauron finds his kid being captured with the mother, and the mother goes to stop him. And so it's fine that the kid has to go through the Spartan training like Sauron did. But Sauron says, well, the wife says, what are we going to do? He goes, nothing. My mother's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I think there was also some interplay between them about who he is. I don't give a fuck. And he goes, no, he, des- he needs this. <laughs> Wait, hold on, what? And then there's this revelation from the wife, like, you weren't interested in Halsey this whole time, which was also made no sense to me, and I didn't give a fuck about it. It felt like a forced bullshit contrived nonsense. But it was because he wanted to get back in with the spot. Oh, and it's revealed that he was let loose by Halsey. <laughs> he, they let him escape because he was taking too much of John's attention. <laughs> this is fucking stupid. Right? But so he's actually going, you know what? Let him. Okay, so three kids have to fend off adults. <laughs> They got these like bucket helmets on and stuff. They got these like little sticks. And I get it. You know, they get beaten up every fucking day. You see he fucking saw in his flashback. And this is what Tesla the kids gonna have to do. <laughs> oh my god. Oh fuck. So here it goes. The wife says, fuck you, you cocksucker. I'm gonna save my son. Byron <laughs> just watches, whatever. The three kids come out with their bucket heads, and the three fucking guys come out of the foggy shadow, and they're about to attack, and the mother screams, fucking Sauron, got a man up, he starts kicking their ass, he saves his son, son, and then as Sauron is beating the shit out of these guys, the son is backing up, 
as the father approaches him. It's one of the most mixed fucking nonsense bullshits where your brain doesn't work because what is this? How does this make sense? You know your father's a pirate. He fucking sells and trades people for, as slaves, indentured servants, whatever the fuck you want to call it, for free passage or whatever. He's a pirate, right? You've been beat up. You've been kidnapped. You've been sold into slavery as the kid Tesla. You've been put through this fucking test where every night you have to, whatever it is, you have to battle these fucking cocksuckers, get beaten up just to keep improving and enduring the pain or whatever. So when you see your father beat this guy to death with a baton and walk towards you with a smile like, hey, I love you, boy, whatever, you back up in terror and it's fucking stupid. Fucking stupid. And then the mother gets captured, the kid gets captured, someone gets taken. And they're in fucking jail cells and fucking one of the most nonsense scenes happens in the last episode where Randa's got the fucking device and oh look at this fucking thing and this fucking new attendant, whoever the fucking name is, we'll call her Quirky Fuck. Because this quirky fuck says, No, I didn't touch it. No. Oh, why would you say that? Randa's like, Oh, we gotta be careful. This fucking thing was dormant, but now it's not. Because, you know, this fucking shit is, it seems pretty dangerous. We don't know what the fuck's going on here. And we have to be careful because I've been here for years, or for a while now, since I left the first season of, of the show, and didn't, no one said anything about her for the whole this whole season. But Miranda's back, and she's got the fucking device. She's noticing the sport. They keep doing these fucking cuts back and forth. And then they play this fucking elevator music while this fucking, fucking... Scientist, confused, quirky chick, fuck nut, is walking around touching people's hands, talking to them. I think she eats a fucking apple. And it's obviously the show, there's this fucking infection thing, this virus is growing, and it's fucking dumb. Dumb, 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 fucking dumb. But John's got his suit, he's gonna go out, you know, whoa, you can save everybody, you can show people and inspire people. No, I gotta get to the fucking Halo. And I gotta do this. I can't worry about this mission in the team. Kai's gotta do this. Kai goes with the Spartan threes, and John goes by himself to fucking do his thing. But this fucking chick, Perez, who I love, puts the quarter in the covenant ship he's gonna steal. <laughs> or even better, John manifests. The fucking coin. Because it's a coin, a quarter. Now, this is a quarter from Earth, which is from the museum. So it has to be Perez. But how the fuck does Perez know he's on a certain ship and he's going to get the certain condo to escape or whatever the fuck it is, uh, whatever the fucking uh, thing. Okay, so that's that's later, I think. Oh, my God. So when he sees, the, you know, okay, so she might have known he was taking that thing. Okay, so let's re retract that. I'm sorry. I apologize here, yeah, Perez. Loving, beautiful, great actress chick. Anyway, so John's in his fucking thing, and he flips the coin, and he goes, you know what? I can do fucking anything. Now, he doesn't say this, but you know it. He says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go and fucking help the Spartan Threes and Kai, and then I'm going to fucking save humanity and go to fucking Halo, because I made it heads. Again, this could have been something that may gave you chills and was so epic by the end. You fucking applauded. Like, this could have been moments of moments of who he is, of what he truly is, what he manifests, reality. Because in the books, um, I think it's the Wheel of Time, they have this thing where they call Taverin, or Taver my friends call it Taverine. And it's where you're a special person in the world where the wheel weaves around you. You'll be brought to where you need to be brought. You'll sway people to your side. Um, but you're also drawn to pockets of evil. You know, it's, it's the way of saying, this is why you're in the book, this is why you're in the adventure, that, you know, you're special. Fine. And we're in the last episode, and it's a fucking counterattack by the Pangoski, whatever the fuck her name is, and Atkinson's, you know, because he already agreed, because John says, uh, you know, I was going to come here, punch a hole in your chest, whatever, but you know what you're going to do? You're going to man up and confess to everything. I'll be broken, I'll be ruined. And he gives a pretty half-decent speech and whatever. 
and says, well, people like you have to pay. You never realize that. Now you're going to pay. So he agrees, and he lets John go. Kandowski realizes this and then puts him in jail. So now Ackerson's in jail with Bucknut Halsey, Soren, maybe the wife. I don't know where the fuck the kid is. Let's say the kid's there. Yeah, the kid's there because then the fucking people start getting sick in the fucking jail cells. That's right. Because the FUD is loose, set loose by quirky fucking fucknut chick who likes to touch things and stuff, whatever. This fucking episode, from the one before it, again, Spartans are flying through space, it's just like a simulation, and just as a, you know, oh, it was a cool scene. They're getting ready to do the jump out of the ship into space, and it blows up before, ooh, what a twist. And they jettison ass, there's a little bit of confusion, and Kai and the team's got to get on the ship, and they make it. And then there's supposed to be this weird dynamic between, oh, can the team put the spike in, and everything is dead. Because remember, one spike, one ship, solar destroy, solar system destroy. <laughs> right? And or, John succeeds. Do they prevent it? Does Parandoski stop her? Ta- Does she rethink her strategy? No, I'm right. We got to stop this. We got to end everything. No, I can. I can do this. I can. Whatever, whatever. So the team's getting fucked up. Kai and Perez, and it's just a lost cause. And they get fucking pinned down and whatever. And then boom, epic scene. Fucking John Master Chief shows up and. Fox people up. Covenant, go fuck yourself. Kai and everybody saved. Um, Perez, who maybe they'll have a like, relationship. I'd rather John be with Perez than fucking Max. He's a fucking nutbag. Anyway. And then you know what? I'm now going to go and <laughs> I'm going to save Halo and get Halo. So John's job is done with them. But there's now like a Another dilemma. It's Kai. What's Kai going to do? How is that going to coincide with Perez and the new Spartan that she's leading? And it was a confrontation, by the way, when Ackerson kind of convinced Kai, wink, wink, that John was bad and she went after him. She beat the living fucking shit out of him. And she had her armor on and John didn't and he didn't really fight back. But she didn't kill him. And however, as soon as she knocks him to the wall and makes him unconscious, Ackerson sent a black ops team to kill John. But it seems like it takes three hours to get there. So John was just walking around the place to get his armor. So that was in the past. So they're okay. They're buddies now. But Kai's there. The team's there. John's fucking rocketing through space. Gonna get to the fucking ship that has Mackie and the Arbiter on it. Because they found it first and they're the closest. How the fuck did the Covenant find anybody? Who the fuck knows? According to the show, the priest was killed and his team was destroyed and the Arbiter had control of the ship and that's when Mackie found out where the exact location was. So Mackie and her Arbiter should be there first, except for John, who has the insight and watched and saw the vision and knows where it is. But this fleet battle is supposedly happening and it's near, near enough Fucking Halo is already bothering me. So it's going to... How do they know? Whatever. So the fleet's in danger because if it gets the spike, Halo supposedly might get destroyed. Who the fuck knows? It's a different timeline. And whatever. So John is rocketing towards the ship with Mackie on it. And Halsey fucking betrays the Oni or whatever and tells John where to infiltrate the ship. So we know they're bad news. Anyway, it puts everybody in weird positions because, you know, in the cell, Soren, his wife, the kid, um, whatever the fuck is going on, the fucking, who the fuck knows, Quan is running away, and then the fucking quirky nut chick turns into a fucking creature and things start spawning like zombie, like from Resident Evil 4, whatever the fuck, those plagas, and, you know, plant things and arms are sprouting out of everywhere. It's fucking chaos. It's pandemonium it's craziness and it's done fucking amazing the flood the way they did it the way they just picked it the way it's 
done is fucking amazing. However, the story leading up to it, how it was released, all garbage, shit, fucking nonsense. So, that's where you fucking are at this last episode. Sean's got his armor, he infiltrates the ship, blah, blah, blah. They crash. Now, I heard people complaining that they didn't use the Pelham of Autumn, whatever the fuck, the special ship that crashes on Halo. Because I think the flood is released on Halo by Covenant, maybe, but whatever. So, 88 humans unleashed the plague on Onyx. But Covenant ship crashes on fucking Halo. So it's John, you know, Master Chief walking through the battlegrounds or something picks up a weapon or two well, definitely has to pick up the blade plasma blade confronts Mackie and the arbiter and here's the rematch fight John gets his ass kicked sort of in the beginning holds his own does a little damage and the arbiter just tells like grabs his weapons they drop away weapons and says stay down accept your death and John says I'm not done yet then proceeds to beat the shit out of the arbiter and then Mackie, oh no, I, don't know, I branded my. Oh, the fucking Arbiter brands himself with some fucking thing. It burns his chest. And then to show her loyalty for the Arbiter killing everybody of his own people, the betrayers of the faith or whatever the fuck, she brands herself. So it's fucking stupid. And she's like, no, Arbiter, talking in the fucking language, which was annoying all throughout. However, the Arbiter's like, kill me, I'm a soldier. I did no more war. What do I do? John says, yeah, fine. You kill Vanek. Whatever. He doesn't say anything. And he fucking kills the Arbiter. That's it. Pretty good fight. Like I said, there are elements in here that are fucking jaw-dropping awesome. Some really tight-knit choreographed fights. Although maybe in the first season, there's this one battle that stands out to me. But there is some great shit in here. Then Mackie... Puts her hand on the thing, opens the door. I'm a demon. <laughs> what makes me laugh all the time is, uh, I, I don't want to say that. Anyway, <laughs> so she goes into the fucking thing. And by the way, there's a major portion I left out that is so deflating, so done wrong. I can see why they made the choice that is horrible. So the last episode starts with John in the dark. Talking to an unknown person or entity. Now, as he's narrating what's going on, oh, she said, you, you, you would say that, you said whatever. I think it's revealed that it's a monitor or it's a, like a probe type droid, little floating ball thing. Anyway, by showing it in the beginning with no leading up to it, like, you know now that Mackie, when she puts her hand on the thing, goes into that opening in the Citadel, whatever the fuck it is, facility, that she's going to go meet this little ball thing. And that when John does it, he goes in and meets this little ball monitor thing. And that's the discussion he's having with the fucking thing. But it's stupid. It's done wrong. It has no fucking weight. It has no interest. There's no delving. In. My brain doesn't go, ooh, what mystery box is this? And how did this happen? No, it's just like, what did I miss? Why is it here? And why is it happening now? But remember, we were on the fucking planet, and there's the fucking floods loose. Soren's got to get out of the jail cell. Quan and fucking Kessler and the wife and Halsey and Miranda. It's chaos. It's mayhem. It's fucking bonkers. And it's fucking awesome horror bonkers. Fucking A, thumbs up for this shit that you should have fucking made. A different season, like you should have just fucking. Anyway, retrospective on this fucking whole thing because this is one of those shows that you get the feeling could be canceled at any moment. I'm sorry, it's just it has that feeling. Anyway, so we're gonna wrap this whole thing up with John, success, Arbiter, and Mackie in the dark room, but hey, Halsey is infected. And she's like she has an orgasm about all the people who died and. How fascinating the fucking, you know, um, the plague is, the flood, and all this death, and what does it mean? Whatever, she's fucking giddy, fucking, you know, just fucking going. And you find out she's infected, so Miranda puts her in deep. She's 
all the progression of your thinking. Now, from what I know, again, I didn't play the games, but I watched and even the books I've read. I'm into the lore and into the stuff. Now, I could be wrong, but the halos in general were made to wipe out solar systems with their blast to stop the flood from progressing. And that these ancient light years ahead of us advanced species could not cure or stop the flood other than wiping it out from its source and containing it in a dormant state. Let's say. Fine. I'm fine with that. I guess because I thought it would have been better released on Halo and you would have had episodes on Halo with the installation because the show is called fucking Halo. And you can leave out things like the pillar of water. You can, you can do your own thing, but whatever. It's just a stopgap. Now, what you cannot do, in my opinion, you cannot do, is have fucking Miranda find a cure for the flood and cure her mom. So I don't know what the fuck they're going to do. They've got to keep Halsey out of the show forever, or you do what I would have done, and I would write. Now, if I was caught in this predicament, I would make a computer interface where Frozen Halsey can still interact with the world through a hologram. That means you can use her mind, you can work on things, whatever, but she's in, she's forever in a dormant, frozen state body-wise. There you go. Fucking done. It'll probably make the show more interesting, but these writers kind of suck in a way. And it, they kind of suck in a way that don't interact with each other that makes other things good. But for instance, Quan might have the best line in the whole fucking show. There's a debate with her and John, and it's to me it's a great moment because if you're gonna do this and you're gonna humanize John and not have him show his fucking butt cheeks and fuck some hot blonde chick, spy, war criminal bullshit, whatever the fuck, you want to do it this way. And anyway, so the dilemma is John doesn't want to bury Vanek or do anything because he's already accepted the loss. To him, the second you die. It's over, the body's nothing, and they're trying to just portray that John is becoming, you know, since the thing, the inhibitor, emotion inhibitor is taken out, him and the Spartans are becoming more human. And when he eventually comes around to it, one of the things Quan says to him is, you have to bury the dead and put them in the ground, or they follow you. Fucking awesome line. Quan is a great actress. I love her in probably anything I see. It's criminal what they've done to her in the first season, but they did make it up in the second season where she's more um, subdued and, you know, enlightened with a contemplator in that sense. But here we are at the end of season two of Halo. Um, it feels like a, it feels like a rehash of the first season. You've got, you know, Ackerson's reveal. He escapes with them. Oh, so Soren's wife pushes them out and closes the door and seals this entryway because she's infected. So one of the last scenes is the kid telling Soren monsters are real, and he goes, I know, because he's been telling the kids monsters aren't real. Meanwhile, every, the whole universe knows monsters are fucking real. They're the covenant, and they're the brutes, and they're elite, and they're grunts, and whatever the fuck. And this show didn't have a big diversity of it this, this season. Each season neglected the galactic threat of the Covenant. And yes, the Reach was done great. It's probably the best episode. But it's so minimalized for the team. And done well, great maybe. But it doesn't show the, oh, I don't need to see some of the glassing to get that impact. It had to be more. Now, in, in the first season, they tried to correct this with hints and maybe radio chatter call it about how dangerous it was what planets were being lost and again it's maybe try it again but not successfully and you've got two seasons in the bag now of a show that borderlines on being good some great things here and there but the merit in the show where is it how does it continue i don't know this has been a long podcast for me because season one and two of halo should have been some of the most epic stuff it should be the Game of Thrones or the video game stuff, and it's not. It has promise here and there. Do I want to watch another season? 
I guess so. My brain wants to connect and make my own adventures out of it. So it's not a lost cause. Is it a recommendation? No. You know, I guess if you like season one, yeah, season two. This this is probably an audience right out there. But my advice is uh, watch the cuts and videos on YouTube or something. Make up your own mind, but this on its own to me has too many failings in the areas that matter, maybe just to me. So maybe it is successful in what it's trying to do, and I'm not seeing their vision because their vision isn't really for me. This could be one of those things. But I would I would bet and kind of argue about some of the flaws that weren't necessary that you could have corrected that smart, experienced writers and you know, shows do well, even shows that aren't in this type of genre. So my excitement is a little mixed. I don't, you know, it's almost like I regret if the season three comes, I got to watch season two again. Because when I watch season one of Halo, and it's also part of some things are so great that the things that are bad just like deflate everything. And I guess that's where I'm at. Anyway, thanks for staying for this long one. I appreciate it. I want all of you out there to have a great summer. Hope all of you are doing well. Till next time, take care.